What's up guys? Today we're going to be looking at this portable QLED display from a company called Nexigo, as you can see in the box. And it's 15.6 inch portable monitor with a QLED backlit technology. So stick around for a minute here and we'll get this unboxed and uh, go over some of the specifications see how it looks. Be right back. If you haven't already done so, please click the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment below. Thanks. Okay, so we've got this turned around here and look at the, the back specifications that they mentioned. So this can use a USB-C connector, it can use a mini HDMI or a full HDMI connection according to the website. And it has a 15.6 inch IPS panel, which supposedly can achieve, uh, I believe they said 750 nits or 600 nits, but it's, it's HDR 600 certified. So that's uh, pretty impressive as far as one of these little things go. I've never seen any of these that are really usually anywhere near that good. It's usually like 250 or maybe 300 nits of brightness. So for a portable HDR display, it's not bad. I mean, whether or not they're really being honest or not is another story. We'd have to play with it and see how it does. But also it has 99% uh, of the sRGB rating and it uh, covers the DCI P3 color spectrum. And it supposedly is a full 10-bit panel, which we'll have to see about how accurate that is as well. And as you see in the back here, this is a little strange. It says 1080p or or 4K. I'm not sure what they're dealing with there. It's possible that... Uh, I think there's two different versions of this, and this one is the 1080p version, and then they make a 4K version, but the 4K version that I saw uh, from their company did not have the QLED backlighting, It was, uh, and I don't think it was HDR600 either, I think it was a lower HDR rating, so higher resolution, but then you give up the backlighting technology and the better brightness, so questionable, but we'll play around with it here, let's get it out of the box and have a look at it and see... I'll hook it up and we'll find out what it can actually do. I want to see if this thing has vase amount support because I couldn't find anything that uh, really was, you know, was truthful about that or, or, or like I couldn't find a picture of it. Like they never showed any of the back of the display. And the 4K one that I found, I think it was on Walmart site actually or Target or something that they had the 4K version of this. And that said it was vase amount supported. So I'm hoping that this is as well. But again, I couldn't find any... Uh, you know, I couldn't find anything that spe specified one way or another. But one thing I thought was funny is that it's the Connie Rast ratio of 800 to 1. They spelled contrast wrong right on the box. But these are all these, all these uh, portable uh, made in China displays tend to be, you know, like the menus are kind of corny or they're generic. Or it's like they use the same menu for a bunch of different monitors. So sometimes the features that are in the menu can't even be enabled, that kind of stuff. So we'll we'll see what happens with this one. But let me go ahead and get this thing opened up. Using my very sharp Gerber blade, carry this thing with me everywhere. It's a nice little little util utility knife, and it also uh, would probably be useful for self-defense if that was something you ended up having to use it for. But I've never encountered that scenario yet. Hopefully, you never do. But it's a just-in-case kind of thing. Hope you guys are getting ready for NVIDIA's Ampere cards to come out. I'm really excited for that. Wait for the 24th for the RTX 3090. Not that that has anything to do with this, but I'm sure that's what's on a lot of PC gamers' minds right now. Or PC users, anyway. So it looks like it comes with... Huh. Okay, so it comes with like a screen protector for you, so that's kind of nice. Sort of weird. I don't know how good a quality that'll be, but it does come with one. So it's a little atypical. And we've got our display right in the box itself, or in this uh, nice bag, I should say. I think it's got uh, some kind of a protective case around the display itself right now, too. We'll come back to that in a minute. We'll see what we got. So we've got some wipes. This is usually, yeah, like they have a wet wipe and then a dry wipe. These are part of the uh, installation kit that you'd use for doing the display itself for the, the screen protector. I wonder if this is a touch screen. I didn't think it was supposed to be. It doesn't mention that anywhere, so I don't know why they're coming with... Screen protectors usually only come with a touch display, so that's a little bit weird. It actually does come with a 
a decent user manual. Most of these that I've gotten have come with almost nothing, or they're like they've been in Chinese, and that's pretty much it. This actually has what looks to be a functional user manual in English, so that's kind of nice. Didn't uh, expect that. So the model numbers are NXG PMF HD 15, and then they have the four, so like basically full HD, you know, the 1080p, which is what I should have. So the, obviously, like I was mentioning, this this is a little generic in that it's a manual for both the 4K and the 1080p version of the display, but that's what we got. So you've got some pretty good functionality on this. And we'll go ahead and look at the math. We'll look at this here in a second without doing too much. Oh, it actually comes with a lot of goodies too. Look at all the swag. Get every cable that you can need with it, I think. So we've got, I'm not sure why you would need this necessarily, but it's got a USB 3 to USB C. So I guess I'll have to read and see why it would need that because I mean, to connect to a video card or any kind of a video source, you can't use this. You'd have to use this straight USB-C to like an RTX 20 series card or newer that has the USB-C port on it. Or like in the case of my laptop, which has Thunderbolt 3 ports that can do video out. That jingling in the background of my cat, he's got his fishing pole out today. It's been playful today. But uh, yeah, so like I said, we've got a full USB-C port or cable here to hook it up to a display output from, again, like my, um, my HP Spectre has two Thunderbolt outs on it, and so I can connect it with that. It does come with a, what it looks like, I think that's full HD, like mini HDMI to full HDMI is what that looks like. Um, it almost looked like DisplayPort for a second, but I think it's just kind of a, because of the cap that's sitting over it. So that looks like that's all that came in the box, but that's pretty nice that they include all these different cables that you could, that you really probably want. I just don't quite understand why they came with a USB three to USB C because it said it has, you know, again, let me go back and read it, but I'm pretty sure it said it has, it says hardware interface, USB, which we know is USB C, HDMI, and mini HDMI. It doesn't mention anything about hooking it up any other way. So maybe this is for power, I guess. Hmm. All right. Well, I'm gonna go over the manual here real quick and then we'll open up this thing and look at the display and connect it and see what it can do. So apparently uh, one of the USB-C ports is like for video in, if you should be so inclined to do it that way, and then the other one is for power, like we were kind of talking about. So, All right, so yeah, it's got like one of these little cases on it that covers everything up. And I'm hoping it has a vase amount, but it doesn't look like it does. We'll see. Maybe I'll get lucky here. No, it doesn't. God dang it. That's a bummer. I was kind of hoping this this would have a of support, and like I said, there was no way to find out by looking at anything. Nothing mentioned it. I even asked on this on uh, Amazon if they could mention, you know, if uh, the manufacturer could get back to me and say yay or nay, but they never got back to me. But there's no no mounting holes on it. So you, pretty, I mean, it's a pretty thin display, so you'd have to have a pretty thin set of mounting holes. So, see, I thought maybe this was almost a Thunderbolt port because it uses the little lightning bolt, which is, you know. Again, what you'd expect from Thunderbolt. Also, they said that you can use full HDMI and it doesn't have that either. It only has the micro. So I don't know what the hell they're doing. These guys are full of shit. Well, again, this is like one of these scenarios where you get like generic instructions with these displays because they don't come with, you know, they don't tell you what they actually have or like their instructions from a different one. That's a little bit irritating. But you got the power button here. You've got, uh, I guess this allows you to navigate through the on screen display. Little headphone jack. Actually, don't know what the hell this little thing is. Sorry, it's got a little plus and an asterisk or a little star symbol next to it that I have no clue what that is. Very strange. Got some speakers on the bottom of it. I don't know how good those are probably likely to be, but we'll try them out and see if they work with the shit. But uh, I guess what we're gonna do. So yeah, see so you've got a uh, little monitor icon. So this can be connected to again, like I could use my my uh, little laptop or whatever. The only thing that I thought was annoying or strange too, let me show you guys this real quick while I've got this here. Um, like in the instruction manual, they show a power brick that they've connected obviously using that USB-C for power. Well, like if you open up the case that it came in here, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Like there's two, you see those two in the corner. I mean, those clearly look like one of them probably should have had something like, especially this one looks like a power brick would have fit in it, but they didn't, they didn't come with one. Uh, and the package didn't look like it had been opened or anything, so I don't know if it was supposed to include one or not. Or again, this is like a generic packaging, 
and so maybe the 4K version comes with one and this one doesn't. I, I don't know. I mean, I've got plenty of them around here, so like, you know, my level of give a damn is pretty low on it, but it's still, again, it's kind of like, well, why aren't you including the things that you need to make this product function? Why is it saying that it has this and it doesn't have this, you know, kind of thing. So that's a little bit annoying. I don't think I'm going to mess with the screen protector, really, because if it's not a touch panel, I'm not going to touch it that often, and if I do, it's like, you know, it's not going to get touched often enough that it's going to need a screen protector on it. I may do it at some point, but I'm not going to screw with it right now. It seems a little bit redundant. See, like this, uh, okay, that little thing I was talking about with the, uh, the little asterisk on it, that's the power indicator as to whether it's on or not, so there you go. <laughs> Here's another uh, little typo. We've got the doll speaker as well as the dual speaker, so yet again, even though it's written in English, it was clearly unlikely an English speaker that translated it. Native English speaker. Okay, well, I guess what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hook it up and we'll see if it's truly capable of decent HDR, if it's capable of a hell of a lot of anything. It's just uh, kind of a bummer that unfortunately it doesn't have VASA mount supported. I had really kind of hoped that it would. I was, I wonder if there's any kind of way you can get like a uh, an adapter or something to convert something like this or use it anyway. I've got like a little kickstand thing that works with one of my other monitors and I might just use it this because it looks like it'll probably function in the same way and I can try to use this but I don't really like these kind of things they never work that well but I guess I'll go ahead and uh we'll fiddle around with it see if we can get it to stand up I mean as long as it stands up well enough I guess it's fine it just uh I wanted to get a few things like this and have them all sitting on uh like all on like a vase mount and do like three of them on like a multi-arm thing and have like these small but high quality, you know, little portable displays or something. I don't know. I just thought it'd be kind of an interesting way to use them. I don't think I've ever seen anybody doing that, so it'd be fun. But give me one second here. I'll hook it up, and we'll see how good of a display it is. If it's any good, if it's not, I can always send it back. But uh, I'm hoping, like, what I think I'll do is I'll compare it to my OLED display on my HP Spectre, and then we can say kind of definitively if we think it's really that good of a, of a monitor or not. So let's do that. All right, I got to hook up to my HP Spectre, connected with uh, the USB-C for video, and then uh, powered off of the standard USB port. So I've got the power coming off here off of a regular USB-C port to the little USB-C jack that had the lightning bolt on it, and then the other one is coming off the other side over there. I've got uh, two Thunderbolt 3 ports on this, so one of them is just powering the laptop, but the other one is I've connected the USB-C to that. They're universal either way, so that does... Uh, sorry, it's getting blurry for some reason. I don't quite know why. Why is it doing this to me? Why is it doing this to me? Hold on. I don't know why it was getting all blurry like that. Sorry about that. But this is definitely the 1080p model as you can see. It's recommending 1080p. I cannot select 4k or anything like that so it's doing what it's supposed to. Oh it actually gives you a color profile option. It lets me pick the DC, DCI-P3. Huh. I don't know why Windows added that in there but HDR does work but it's uh like you've hey uh like we're kind of used to it so it makes windows look a little bit washed out which is expected but uh I tested some HDR content on YouTube and it actually doesn't look too bad there's uh I don't want to play too much of this guy I'm going to mute it because I don't know if I'll get a copyright strike sorry for the HD channel this is strictly for for learning purposes um, maybe I won't play it, I'll just do still images. Let's jump around in a little bit. Here you go. Like, so you can kind of see, I mean, really, like, again, this is a very reflect, this is a glass, a glossy display. It's not matte. So you're going to get, unfortunately, all this lovely shit in the background here. I can't really do much about that. You, it's it's going to reflect everything. That, that is what it is. But, uh, the black levels on this thing are really quite good. Um, I guess what we'll do in a minute here, although I don't, again, how you, the viewer, are going to, you're just going to take my word for it, I guess, because my OLED display on the laptop is also glossy. So it's kind of like, well, it is what it is. I tried putting the screen protector on it. Uh, I've never had good luck with those kind of things. I just took it off. I'm, I'm going to throw it away because they're useless. Um, it will not adhere without a bunch of bubbles in it, and it doesn't even come with a way to deal with that. Like, they're supposed to come with, like, that little scraper thing to push the bubbles out. It didn't come with one. So you can't really apply the screen protector that comes with it correctly without probably having again something else i wonder if that's a dead pixel up there let's uh that looks like a little red spot to me no okay just like a fire little piece of the fire i guess 
or whatever. But anyways, I don't want to use this guy's video too much or anything because he might decide to copyright strike me. But basically, uh, just wanted to use that as a good example of a HDR image. It looks really quite good. Um, but you can hook up your t you know your phone to this with a USB C. You know, up most phones these days, at least Android phones, uh, have a USB C port, so you can connect those to this. And uh, voila, you know, you'll have a nice portable HDR 600 display. Uh, nice picture, you know, nice color depth, nice uh, color spectrum, you know, with the QLED backlight looks really good. Nice, nice uh, col popping colors. Even though with HDR enabled, it's not, you know, going to be amazing necessarily. I did find that I was getting some chop with that HDR playback, but I don't believe that's the monitor's fault. I think that uh, there's something up with the Intel drivers right now for the, um, it's the Iris Plus that this laptop uses and that could sort of uh, has something to do with it because uh, I've played with some other stuff and it works fine. I should probably chalk it up to like my main desktop or something to make sure that that was all that was but I'm pretty sure that it's just a driver issue because I've had some weird problems with HDR content played on this laptop anyway. I'm pretty pretty certain at this point that it has something to do with the Intel driver or something as opposed to anything that I'm doing. But uh end up being a pretty nice looking display. Uh, again the cons would be there's no vase amount. It's only 1080p. So at this, I mean, with a screen this size, that's a pretty good pixel density. It's just like carrying around a laptop display with it, like having an additional laptop display because most laptops ten, are in the you know 15.6 range, where that's like a medium size anyway. Uh, my Spectre is 13.3, so this is actually a little bit bigger than that. But uh, I believe this is the only QLED portable display on the market that I've seen. Um, you can buy, Asus makes a ProArt OLED display, but it's like four grand or something. It's either two, I can't remember if it's 2,500 or if it's four grand, but I think it's like four grand. And that's for professional artists with, uh, like who have to go from office to office to show their work or something and they need, or like professional photographers who need to be able to show, you know, uh, a client specifically what the photo is going to look like with a super color accuracy kind of thing. But this isn't for that. This is just like, you know, additional content, extend your desktop kind of thing a little more desktop real estate with the laptop, you know, that way you can have uh and then also it's for console usage. So like if you had, uh, if you wanted to go to a friend's house and you wanted to bring over the, uh, you know, like the Xbox or, you know, whatever the heck it is you're using and you wanted to be able to play your games or like your Nintendo Switch or anything like that, this is a nice way to take your console and have a little portable display with you that can still, you know, most modern consoles like the Xbox One X and the uh, PS4 Pro and of course now the new consoles are coming out that all support, you know, high dynamic range and so forth. Even though this is only 1080p and not 4K, um, you know, you'd get a nice little boost to your image quality on this that you wouldn't get, uh, you know, or again, just depends on what kind of TV your friend has, but or like if you're going camping or something crazy like that, or you know want to bring this with you somewhere where you're not going to have access to uh, you know the big screen, you've got this nice little portable display you can bring with you and hook up to your console. So that's uh you know it's a pretty nice little little thing to have. Uh, MSRP on this is like 199 bucks. I don't know if I'd say it's worth that or not. Um, it's I'm really pretty pleased with the color quality on it, though. i got to say, it does look pretty good. Again, like the black levels on it are really good from the HDR content that I just tried. That definitely was impressive uh, for a portable display. For the price range, it's not too bad. If it had something like, um, and maybe it does, uh, because a lot of these Chinese panels will support uh, FreeSync. Well, whether they say they do or not, a lot of them will will work with it. Or at least like you can try to enable it. Some of them I've been able to like attempt to enable it and it didn't work. It's like, it, again, I think they tend to use a lot of generic, uh, even like a generic BIOS, for example, uh, on a lot of these. I don't know if that's what you call it on the monitor versus whatever. The, you know, like the, the, the software, the flash software that they have in it. Um, a lot of them have generic options across multiple mo monitors. So it's like, you know, three of them might not support FreeSync, and one of them does, and they'll use the same software on all of them. You try to enable FreeSync on three out of four, and it doesn't work. Uh, I'll show you guys the menu here real quick. If I can, yeah, okay. So, I mean, you've got your general stuff, your brightness, contrast, um, eco, I don't know. Uh, I can turn dynamic, uh, dynamic contrast on or off. You can change the sharpness, of course, the usual stuff. And this is like uh, different presets. Oh, that's a lot brighter, isn't it? Hmm. Kind of weird, because like this is... Uh, this is at 100 brightness on FPS mode, but I go to 90 brightness on uh, RTS mode. 
on RTS, yet it seems brighter in RTS mode. That's a little bit strange. But, okay, so basically you can move around, screw around and pick whatever presets you like. That might actually improve the HDR a bit, because that threw the brightness up to 100. And it still looks good, like the blacks are still black, like you can see in Sauron's tower here. The blacks still look really black. Uh, to navigate the menu, there's like the little wheel button. You push that in once to bring it up, and then you, you know, rotate it up to move up, rotate it down to move down, and then there's the power button over here on the left, you can push that and it will backspace you if you're, you know, into a menu. So like if I go into uh, here and I want to change the aspect ratio, uh, maybe I can't change the aspect ratio. Oh, there you go. Oop, hopefully that doesn't, oh, four by three and wide. So that's, oops, I did it again. <laughs> didn't mean to hit it a second time. But uh, so I want to back out and hit the power button, it backs out to the previous portion. Uh, oh, I'm going to go back one more. We've got, uh, there was the HDR settings. Yeah, so this has got uh, reset, which I think just resets all your the settings that you've done. Auto power down, I guess that would be like a power saving mode. If you left the thing running for a while, it would shut it off for you. If it didn't detect any usage, I'm not really sure how long that would take before that would kick in. And then you've got HDR mode, auto and off. There's no, like you can't really tell it any specific setting other than to be on or off, so, okay. Looks like you can move the OSD position around if you want. You can make it more transparent, change the language in it. So like if I wanted to be able to see through it slightly, that sort of thing. Uh, and then the timer, I guess, is how quickly it'll kick you out if you don't touch it. Change the color spectrum of the monitor. All right, that's pretty much the stuff that we went with, so nothing too crazy here. Pretty generic options, but the speakers on it I didn't think were particularly good. Like, I'll go ahead and load up one of my own videos on YouTube, maybe, just so we can, uh, you guys can hear the speakers, but they're, they're nothing to write home about, which I wouldn't expect them to be. I mean, basically, it's kind of like laptop speakers at this point, so nobody expects much out of that. And of course, the AC just kicked on, so that's not too loud, but, and you're not going to hear it that well through this microphone either, so... What can I tell you? But, uh, whatever. Put this on. It's got music on it. Probably should turn on. Yeah, we're okay. I didn't say though, really, it's a pretty good picture. I mean, they're acceptable, so we'll put it that way. They're tolerable. You know, again, like if you're if you're just going out to hang out with your buddies or something like that and you've got your Xbox or your PlayStation with you or your, your Nintendo Switch or whatever it is, even like with your Amazon phone, like I could take my phone and connect it to this, uh, you know, and then I could use that. I got that 8, what is it called, 8-bit, whatever. You know, basically it's like an SNES Bluetooth pad that I could control the game with, you know, uh, through the phone. So I could hook this display up to my phone and then play games uh you know like use like this this would be a good way to do like the geforce now service uh, again like you know you bring your phone with you or whatever and you load up your geforce now and then you've got your larger display although really i mean if you just had a tablet or something it'd probably be better than carrying two things but assuming you didn't have a tablet you know and you had your phone which most people carry a phone on them and then you have you know a wi-fi connection somewhere that you're able to get access to and you hook up to your nice a nice portable QLED display here, and oh, voila, you know, you're good to go. Let's, uh, let's do one more thing here. Let's see how Eve does. Well, I just noticed, I'm pretty certain I've got a dead pixel right here, almost damn near dead in the center of the screen, so I might be sending this thing back anyway and getting a replacement, uh, and see if I can get luckier the next time around, but that's, uh, yeah. Pretty sure I got a little green pixel right here. It's hard to probably see for you guys. I thought you could see it very well at all, but especially with my head right there. But maybe you can see it now. I don't know. But uh, this is something I wanted to show you guys real quick, though. Putting that off to the side. Uh, the Intel Iris. I know it really has nothing to do with this video, so I'm just going off on a tangent as I often do. But this is running on the integrated graphics. This is a. Uh, I don't know if I have this in 1080p right now, or if it's still trying to run it at 1440p, because that's how I had it before. Let me see here real quick. Yeah, it's a 10A. But this is with an integrated 
card in the, the 10th gen. The 11th gens that just came out the Tiger Lake are supposed to have quite a bit better GPUs even than this, but this is doing a pretty good job. And it seems like if I set uh, shader quality to like medium on this, which of course it won't look as good, but it seems like that really improves the frame rate on this. Alright, there we go. So yeah, I mean it really kind of nerfs the appearance of it, but the frame rate gets really pretty damn good. So that's something to consider if you guys are looking at something like like a, getting a mobile 10th gen system. Uh, the Iris series of graphics cards, and then like I say, the next one here on Tiger Lake, which is the uh, XE series of uh, integrated GPUs, is supposed to be really pretty good for 1080p gaming. I've tried a few games on this. I played Mass Effect 2, which is of course old, but that runs really well. Uh, but most modern games, not so great. But EVE is, even though it's an older game, has pretty modern graphics, and uh, it looks really pretty impressive for a game this age. But that's enough going off on a tangent. Um, like I said, it looks like I got a dead pixel, so I might be sending this back. Although it's pretty hard to notice. I barely noticed it until just recently, so I'll just I'll, I'll think about it if it's worth screwing with it. But it's right there. I mean, if it was off to the side somewhere, and maybe I'll spend a little time and see if I can find any more. If there's more dead pixels, I'm definitely sending it back. But... Uh, for 200 bucks, like I say, maybe a little bit much, but it's pretty handy for the things I mentioned. And, uh, you know, like I say, it looks, has some of the nicest picture quality on a portable display of this type that I've ever seen. Usually they're kind of crappy or like they're, you know, uh, they're IPS, but they have a lot of backlight bleed and they don't have, you know, the QLED backlighting and, the, you know, you get a lot of gray instead of black, uh, you know, good deep black backgrounds and things. So this is, you know, for a portable HDR display, pretty good. Well, that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be sure to do a new video here in the near future. Uh, stick around for upcoming content. Thanks and have a great one. Later.